life and speaks words of peace to us. And so we are here to celebrate the good news. Alleluia, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let's celebrate together and sing a couple of songs to start with. He has risen and Easter jubilation.
Easter jubilation fills the streets and towns. Celebrations have begun. Hear the music and the dancing now. Join the laughter and the fun. Oh, raise a joyful shout. Clap your hands and dance. Let your feelings out. Oh, hear what it's about. Christ the Lord has come. Put aside your sorrows, wipe your tears away, for a better time will come. There's a promise on the brighter day, join the laughter and the fun. Oh, raise a joyful shout, clap your hands and chants, let your feelings out. Good evening. Our prayers this evening are focusing on the sunflower, and you will see the beautiful sunflowers at the front. So I want to um, just begin this time of prayer with two quotes from the Calendar Girls. The flowers of Yorkshire are like the women of Yorkshire. I think we could say the men too. Every stage of their growth has its own beauty. But the last phase is always the most glorious. Then very quickly they all go to seed. It's ironic that my favourite flower isn't even indigenous to the British Isles, begins the second quote, let alone Yorkshire. I don't think there's anything on this planet that more trumpets life than the sunflower. For me, that's because of the reason behind its name. Not because it looks like a sun, but because it follows the sun. During the course of the day, the sunflower tracks the journey of the sun across the sky, a satellite dish for sunshine. Wherever light is, no matter how weak, these flowers will find it. And that's such an admirable thing and such a lesson in life. So let us pray. Loving God, may we follow the sun risen today. Day by day, may we journey with the sun risen today. May we be those who perceive the light even in the darkest of times. May we be those who shine 
so that others can find for themselves the light of Christ risen today. We thank you that every stage and season of our spiritual journey is beautiful in Christ, risen today. So today, on this day of resurrection, may we be filled anew with sunshine as we worship Jesus, who is glorious in resurrection life. And may we be those who sow seeds of new faith in others. In the name of Jesus, risen today. Amen. Glory of the risen Lord. reading is from Luke chapter 24 verses 1 to 8. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. Thanks be to God for his word.
just bear with me for one second while my iPad has turned to back to Good Friday. It's not what we want. <laughs> it will be there in a moment. It's definitely here. There it is. We decided that we would ask the question, where is Jesus alive this evening? Easter Day, the day of resurrection, began in a place of death. An area in the community set aside for the burial of bodies. A gloomy place and a gloomy time in the morning too, before the sun had really risen with the glow of dawn in the sky. Some of us were up at that time this morning. Put your hands up if you were up at that time this morning. Well done, everybody. We did well this morning, wherever we did it. Back then, not, not only the place and the air was gloomy, the mood was gloomy as well. A mood of overwhelming sadness. The horror of Friday had left its mark on those who loved Jesus. Their weeping had ceased for the time being, but it was just there, just below the surface. Tears were ready to flow. All was lost, all expectation, all hope, all confidence, all lost, because all of those things were encapsulated in Jesus, and he had been taken from them in the most violent and final way. And it was into that place and time and that mood of misery that Jesus rose from the dead. He burst out of the shackles of pain and torture and crucifixion and the shackles of death itself. He shook them off, he stretched and he emerged alive again, very, very alive and part of this world once more. And it all begins in a pace of death. Death is so much with us in life. It's a reality that surrounds us. It's filled with fear and uncertainty and sadness and we don't want it. But Jesus is alive, alive in a place of death. And his being alive transforms death itself into a new reality. Not the end, but a glorious new beginning. Death has no power over us. We are free, free in God's presence now and for all eternity. Easter Day, the day of resurrection, isn't just about today. It's about every day and forever for each one of us. As Jesus stepped out of that tomb in that place of death, he has won. Death's power was overturned. And here, in the power of the risen Christ, we live and move and have our being and we celebrate that today let's celebrate it as we sing our next song see what a morning
Alive in my heart. Jesus is alive in our hearts. Caroline Alty at um, Ilkley Road, otherwise known to her class as Miss Alty, uh, was asking her children to uh, write about the resurrection. And they came up with some beautiful definitions. And my favorite was, the resurrection is so important, without it, It would be like a sandwich without any bread. It would all just fall to pieces. I love that. Out of the mouths of uh, primary school children. A theologian, and I can never remember which particular theologian, was asked um, in all of his wisdom and intellect to describe what it meant to have Jesus alive in his life. And with deep thinking... An academic thought, he said, it's like something within me doing knees up, Mother Brown. (laughs) We had a family living next door to us in in one of the places where we lived, and they had four beautiful daughters. And one of them would describe that joy as being fizzy inside, feeling fizzy inside. I wonder how we... I wonder how you would describe Jesus being alive in your heart. For me, it's sometimes a sense of love and of being loved, of a gift of love that's unconditional and constantly renewed. When our Joe was born, There was this incredible sense of love that was given to me as a gift to love him. And when I was pregnant with our Jacob, I was really worried because I'd had that gift of love. And what would happen when Jacob was born? And when Jacob was born, there was this whoosh and this gift of love. The love of God that fills us that enables us to hold everything together, to do knees up Mother Brown in the power of the Holy Spirit, to feel fizzy inside, is that whoosh of love that we feel that God has for each one of us, a blessing of love that never ends. Jesus alive in my heart feels like joy, not always about being happy, Not always about happiness, but a joy which is deeper and more sturdy than that. A spiritual joy which gives me strength and a hope. Jesus being alive in my heart is peace. Not a wishy-washy sense of peace, but something which is stubborn and rooted. It's that center, that calm in the middle of the storms of life. Jesus is alive in my heart. I really like love hearts. If ever you want to buy me sweets, now you know. I particularly like love hearts. Jesus being alive in my heart is like receiving by the Spirit a packet of holy and divine love hearts. With all those reminders constantly as Jesus fills me. As Jesus speaks to me, messages and reminders that I am loved, that we are loved, that the joy of the Lord is our strength, that we receive a peace that surpasses our understanding. And without it, everything would just fall to pieces. 
The resurrection holds it together. The bread of life holds us together. So we taste and see with these spiritual love hearts that the Lord is good. He is alive within us. That makes us feel, hopefully, a bit spiritually fizzy. And that fizz needs to bubble out to conclude. I have that image of those champagne towers where it water falls down. As we are filled, so it bubbles out of us and pours into blessing so that others too can feel that aliveness in their hearts. Amen. Another song, what gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Can we do that again? Yeah. <laughs> Have you got it now? <laughs> we can score it. Right, one, two, go.
Jesus is alive and with us today. And through the miracle of the resurrection, Jesus is alive and with us today. But what does that mean for us as individuals, as Christian communities and as churches? Jesus, as part of the Trinity, is a missional God. And he's a missional God who invites us to partner in mission with them. But that is a divine mission, not our limited human vision of mission. We may find that we are a very, very tiny cog in God's vast and immense vision. We may never know the bigger picture or where our part fits in. If we reflect, Jesus died for our salvation, defeats death, and is alive with us today, and offers to partner with us in mission. Wow, that is an awesome invite. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. But it's also quite overwhelming. After all, what are we being asked to do? How can we discern God's call for us? Especially in our busy 24-7 lifestyle, that is so noisy. How can we hear God through all of that noise? So we need to find the quiet spaces, the prayerful spaces, the spiritual spaces. Although sometimes our God, our God of love, will speak to us in the middle of the noise and the chaos, just when we least expect it. Our wonderful God of love, love that hung on the cross for us, love that took away our sin, love that loves us unconditionally, love that loves us in the noise and the chaos. That love is a living love, alive with us today. And I want to quote something from a little boy called Bobby, who was seven and a half. A group of children were asked what love meant to them. And they come out with really mature and profound answers, but this was my favourite. Bobby, seven and a half, says, Love is what's in the room at Christmas time if you stop opening the presents and listen. <laughs> Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit have given us many gifts. Most of those are to share with others. But if we just for a moment put our gifts to one side... And listen, can we hear the love in the room? So we're going to do that now. I'm going to ask you, if you'll indulge me, to put your hand over your heart and press gently. If it's easier, you might find your pulse. And we're just going to listen and I'll close in prayer. Dear loving and gracious and risen Lord, alive in us, alive with us, and alive and acting through us, share with each of us here today your call for us as individuals and as communities of faith. As we feel the beat of your blood pumping through our body, be alive in us through your Holy Spirit demonstrate, whisper, or let us sense your call. Let us know what must be put aside or what must be let go, what is ours to do in this place, and press these things in our minds and our hearts so we can faithfully do your will. Amen. Another song before some more prayers, and then some more songs. I cannot tell why he whom angels worship should set his love upon us now or then. I'm sure you know this one.
some assistants around the place somewhere and they're going to come round and we have some bowls of sunflower seeds I invite you to take a few you can have a, have a small handful if you want there are plenty, there's enough to feed the birds in our garden for the next six months so uh, take as many as you want you also have an envelope don't put them in the envelope right now but the envelope's there so you can take them away afterwards I thought that was the easiest way to get them in the envelope do it yourself <laughs> Apologies to those who are watching from a distance. I can't find a way of sending them down like, like they did in uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But if you wanted some and sent a message to the church, I'm certain that we could post you some. So there's an invitation to participate in that way. There are plenty of seeds and the birds in my garden will never go hungry. I promise.
you're doing. Has everyone received some seeds? <coughs> yeah. I think we're about there. I'll have some. Thank you. Just one or two. Thank you very much. So good. And so we're just going to hold these seeds in our hands as we pray. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, all the life had flowed from your body and all hope had been lost. It seemed finished, ended, gone. But you did not remain in the tomb. An energy beyond our understanding turned death on its head and you were alive once more, bringing new, new hope, new life, new purpose and new direction. And like a seed that can be planted in the dark earth and burst forth with new life, so your living presence was much too big to stay incarcerated in a tomb and you emerged and the good news of your love your hope and your peace your presence and your purpose for this world were too big to remain buried but grew and spread across this world and down the centuries they are spreading still and you walk this earth alive and with us still by your spirit. And we, your people, carry your good news with us wherever we go. And so we pray for your troubled world of today. So much fear. So much sadness. So much greed. So much violence not so different from the world into which you emerged at resurrection. We have not learned to live in peace. We have not learned to be content with what we have. We haven't learned your message of care for one another. We haven't listened to your voice of peace. Forgive us, the people of your world today, Lord Jesus. We hold seeds in our hands, full of promise and hope. And we hold the knowledge of who you are and your message of living hope for this world in our hearts. May we and all who have chosen to follow you be filled with the energy of your living spirit and ready to point to the hope we have in a myriad of ways, so that the reality of your living presence may truly impact this suffering world and be the difference. Sometimes it seems hopeless, but then we remember how hopelessness was transformed as death was overcome that day long ago. And we are people of your living resurrection, Easter people, for you are alive and there is hope. Thank you. Amen. So I invite you to put your seeds into your little envelope and take them home with you and to plant them. And when they grow, do take some photographs and send them. You can send them to James, I'm sure, if you're from Eldwick. And if you want to send them to Esther in the circuit office, I'm sure she'd be delighted to receive them. And let's, let's flood our websites and our social media uh, with sunflowers, visual representations of God's living love and hope in this world. Didn't give myself an envelope, I'll have to sort that later. We're going to conclude now with a couple of songs. Uh, first, Thine Be the Glory, and then There is a Redeemer.
you everybody for coming this evening and for tuning in online particular thank you to Claire and the band for leading us um, James and the team on PA thank you very much just to say it's been a long day for some <laughs> but you know the good news is this day doesn't end here because this is the greatest day in history death has been beaten we have been rescued so let's sing it out as we go the empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, that is what we have won, been won for us because of Jesus' life, death and resurrection. So let's shout it out as we leave and we meet those around us. So a blessing, may this Easter day bring resurrection life to your heart and your home. May renewal radiate within you and revival emanate through you. May dawn displace the darkness and spring replace the winter in your life. May the God of hope so fill you with joy and peace this Easter that you may overflow with resurrection hope by the power of his life forever. Amen. Amen.